the water were rock kadash. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to Ahaya Kesed, Bahashim Yeshaya. That's all praises to the Father in the name of the Son. Shalom, family. This is little son Sabal Nabaya. Let us not delay. Let's go straight to Isaiah, the 28th chapter, and read verses 9 and 10. That's Isaiah, chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now go with me to Psalm 119 and let's read verse 104. Psalm 119, 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Now drop down to verse 128. It says, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. So we get our understanding via the precepts. You can get this if you are weaned from the milk. So don't feel pressured if we start talking about things that you don't understand, that you don't have a good grasp on, that's okay. You need to go back and you need to drink the milk. That's a very important part of the process. But when you are weaned from the milk, then you can move forward and you can get some understanding. Now, everybody grab your steak knife and go with me into the stick of Joseph. We're going to go to Alma chapter 42 and we're going to read verses 7 and 8. That's Alma chapter 42 verses 7 and 8. It says, And now ye see by this that our first parents were cut off, both temporally and spiritually, from the presence of the Lord. And thus we see they became subjects to follow after their own will. Now behold, it was not expedient that man should be reclaimed from this temporal death, for that would destroy the great plan of happiness. Let's go ahead and read verse 9 as well. That's Alma 42 verse 9. Therefore, as the soul could never die, and the fall had brought upon all mankind a spiritual death as well as a temporal death, that is, they were cut off from the presence of the Lord. It was expedient that mankind should be reclaimed from this spiritual death. So the scripture is letting us know that the Most High has a plan for us and that it is expedient that we should be reclaimed from the spiritual death. Now, let's go in the stick of Judah to John chapter 3 and let's read verse 16 again. Man, this is the third lesson in a row where we are reading John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we have been talking a lot lately about the love of the Father. That being the very reason that he sent his son. Now go with me to the book of Mark chapter 10. And let's read verses 13 through 16. That's Mark chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 13 through 16. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Yeshia saw it, he was much displeased. And he said unto them, Suffer not, Salachia, suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. 
For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Why would Yeshua say this? Why would he say that you have to receive the kingdom of God as a little child? What you're going to find out is this is essential to the plan that the Most High has for us. Go with me to Luke chapter 13. And let's read verse 5. Luke chapter 13 verse 5. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. The Messiah says, unless you repent, unless you have a change of mind, then you're going to perish. Unless you get your mind right, you're going to die. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. And let's read verse 32. Matthew chapter 10 verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. The very last lesson we did, did we not just talk about how Yeshia was pleading to the Father for us to be created one by one? You're going to see that in this plan, it is essential for you to do as Christ commands so that he can do this for you in the future, so that he can confess also before his Father which is in heaven on our behalf again. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 3 and let's read verse 27. That's Galatians chapter 3 verse 27. It says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So we all understand that baptism is essential. This is not optional. This is essential. Now, go with me to Mark again. Go back to Mark chapter 8. And let's read verse 36. That's Mark chapter 8. And let's read verse 36. It says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. You see, there is a balance. There's a balance to the plan that the Father has for us. The Father loves us, but let me tell you something. You don't want love from somebody who does not love you of their own free will. Think about your spouse. You know, we would not want our spouses to love us if we had to force that love upon them. Everyone wants to be loved, but they want that love to be freely given and freely received. Or I should say freely received and freely given. So there is an allowance for that in the plan that the Father has for us. Now, let's go back to the stick of Joseph. And let's read verses 22, Salakia. Let's read Alma chapter 42, 
verses 22 through 24. That's Alma chapter 42, verses 22 through 24. But there is a law given, and a punishment affixed, and a repentance granted, which repentance mercy claimeth, otherwise justice claimeth the creature and executeth the law, and the law inflicteth the punishment. If not so, the works of justice would be destroyed, and God would cease to be God. But God ceaseth not to be God, and mercy claimeth the penitent, and mercy cometh because of the atonement. And the atonement bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead, and the resurrection of the dead bringeth back men into the presence of God, and thus they are restored into his presence to be judged according to their works, according to the law and justice. For behold, justice exerciseth all his demands, and also mercy claimeth all which is her own, and thus none but the truly penitent are saved. So understand that you can't fake repentance. I mean, you really, you really have to have a change of heart, a change of mind. You really have to think differently. Now, let's go into the book of remembrance. We're going to go into the book of remembrance. We're going to go into Second Achi. Second Achi chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 13 through 55. That's Second Achi chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 13 through 55. And it came to pass that after Achi had witnessed the anointing of Messiah and the heralding of the great decrees of creation, his vision continued in this wise, and there never could be a greater vision come to the eyes of man. And as Achi beheld in his vision, he saw that Messiah went and stood before his father, and they spoke together. And it was not after the manner that he had seen when he saw the creation of all the souls of men. For this was the first great council in heaven, where decisions must be made, and all things must be determined, concerning how all the degrees of creation must be put into effect. And the Chi could plainly see that this time Messiah stood as the spokesman for all mankind, before all the concourse of heaven, and they all were awaiting for the Holy Great One to speak. And God said to his son, Where shall we create all the children of men? And what is the manner in which we shall give element the form it shall have? For it is certain that all men will need a home for their souls to dwell in. And for them to have a home, they of a necessity must be in the midst of the element of my being that has been given form, for their spirits must have a body of flesh wherein they may dwell, and they also must dwell in the midst of other elements of my being that have such a form as to provide for their daily needs and the nourishment of their souls that springs forth from the storehouse of my loving kindness. For except their spirits and bodies can join inseparably with the element that has found form in the midst of my great love for them, they cannot have a fullness of joy, and they surely will go out from being in the spiritual realm of Elda unto the natural realm of Eden in the day that the element of their bodies is brought forth into form. For there is not as yet any element that has found form in Elda, for I dwell in element whether it has form or no. And as they find themselves in Eden, it will of necessity come about. 
that they will move out of Eden into the temporal realm of the earth should they ever exercise their agencies to do that which is against the nature of my being of my being for in Eden there can be sin but it cannot remain wherefore how shall it come to pass that we shall determine where to create all the souls of men so here they are in the first great council in heaven and they are trying to determine where men will be created and where they will live and the most high is letting you know like look here in this place this spiritual realm that we are in there is no sin now another candidate for where they could be created is Eden in Eden there can be sin but the sin cannot remain in Eden so this is what they are discussing so let's pick this up at verse 17 and it came to pass that after the father had posed this great question a watcher was standing by who is called a sale and he said O holy father will you not declare after you have created all things that all the things you have created are good and that being so will you not then create all the children of men in the temporal world of earth so that they may feel at home there and be comforted that they are where they belong seeing that they all will surely go there after they sin as you have said for because of their sins they all will be transformed and become subject to the limitations of time and to the boundaries of a temporal place and they also will suffer afflictions and grow old and die and then their spirits will separate from their bodies so in verse 17 we now see this angel Asael and he's saying he poses a third place he says hey why not create them on the earth because they're going to feel at home there. You said they're going to go there anyway. You know. So don't create them here. Don't create them in Eden. Send them straight there. Send them straight to the earth. Let's pick up on verse 18 now. And it came to pass that while a sail was saying this. There was a watcher of the present standing by. Whose name was Cabodiel. And she prophesied to a chi, and she whispered like the gentle rustling of leaves into his ear. And she said, The intentions of some who will rebel against God during the course of the earth will be such that they will desire for all men to think that their sin is natural, and thereby they will be greatly urged upon not to resist evil but to accept it openly and all those who do this desire for man to be created upon the earth and that she listened with wonder to her sayings and the sail continued and he said since all men will be subject to these things will you not see fit to create all men upon the temporal earth so that they may be content with all that befalls them. So remember y'all that a chi is the one having the vision. He's the one being shown all of these things that were taking place. And a chi is watching this and he just watched where a sail just made a case for man to be created on the earth. But then the angel of the presence, Cabodiel, you know, she comes along and says, hey, all of those who who want men to to be created upon the earth, 
these are the ones that will desire for men to think that their sin is natural. Now, we've seen this name assail before. If you guys remember our lesson on the fallen watchers, assail was the meteor iron. So understand that assail from the beginning what he had in his heart was he wanted man to be created on the earth. He wanted man to be created on the earth and he wanted man to think that their sin is natural. And notice that he's real slick with it because it sounds good the way he puts it. But you know, he wasn't the smartest one in the room. <laughs> Let's go to verse 19. Verse 19, it says, And after God had heard all these sayings, it came to pass that Achi beheld a marvelous sight, and it filled his soul to overflowing. And he, excuse me, and he saw and bore record that Messiah came forth to answer these sayings, and he stood in the light that proceeded from before the face of his father, and he stood there to represent all men and to plead before God in their behalf. And he was the one who had openly come there to speak in behalf of all those who had sinned and who had corrupted their way. And all who were present in heaven in this great council knew that any such as had sinned were not able to enter into the great abode of God where this council was being held. And the chief said to the one who was standing by, whose name was Shabbatiel, What is this that is now before my eyes, that Messiah should take part of all sinful men and all those who are unclean, and seeing that all such are ever unworthy to stand in the light of the presence of God, why should he stand boldly forth to plead before his Father in their behalf? And how is it that he should thus represent them before the great God? in heaven. And the watcher of the presence said to him, with a voice that was like the rushing of a soothing cool wind, Be it known this day that Messiah, because of his unabounding love for each and every soul, has taken it upon himself to see to their benefit and to set his hand to the task of their blessing, and his love is infinite, insomuch that he is their strong advocate before the face of the Father always, and without him to do this for them, seeing they could not enter into the presence of the Father after they sin, all men would be forever lost. Do y'all see that? Do you understand how the Most High, we just read the verse earlier where the Most High is going to be before the Father on our behalf just like he did in the beginning do you see that let's let's pick up where we left off verse 22 and it will come to pass that he will stand as you see him now seven times in this manner during all the course of mankind and he will both be a strong advocate for all the host of the souls of men together and for every individual one of them, for he is their benefactor before God always in his love for them, in spite of their sins and failings, for unto him is given all power, both on earth and in heaven, and he is and he in this way has obtained unspeakable blessings for every person who has come into the world to find breath. No matter how they have used their agency, that's their free will, no matter how they have used their agency to choose, and his pleadings will only cease for those who suffer the second death and die as to things pertaining to righteousness. And his pleadings for the souls of men shall be after this manner. He will plead for them two times before they are created in a day before the beginning and he will plead two times for them during all their walk in the flesh 
and he will plead in behalf of all men once at the at the great judgment no matter whether they be righteous or wicked and he will plead two times again for them after the great judgment is completed and all things have been determined in their behalf so y'all see where the Messiah will plead for us seven times let's pick up on verse 25 and all of the righteous will ever be subjected to the benefits of his pleadings that he has done in their behalf and they shall dearly love him for it in all eternity and they shall praise him forever and ever for they each one are thus blessed by him with incomprehensible blessings that can only be known when a person is standing in the presence of God and also the wicked must be subjected to the knowledge of all that they might have become because he was their strong advocate and his pleadings in behalf of the wicked will also have an effect that shall never pass from before their eyes and it came to pass that Achi was astonished at all these sayings of Shabbatiel and he was very much moved upon to witness and love Messiah for all of the children of men. Verse 28 And the day will come that all people will behold the very things he saw and each and every human soul will behold it for themselves for they will not be able to deny the wondrous love he has for them and the righteous will rejoice in it forever and ever both in their life in the flesh and in the life that is to come and his love will either bring unspeakable joys or insufferable sorrows for it will be plainly known to all in that day what each person has done with the abundant love that he had offered in their behalf verse 29 and it came to pass that a chi now saw that messiah stood before his father to answer the question he had posed and to respond to all the words of a sale and he said O holy father if you create all the children of men in the temporal world of the earth as had as has been said then the corruptions of their habitations that come because of unrighteousness and the shortcomings of their families which come because of weakness and the lust of the flesh and the evils of their peoples which come because they will follow the traditions of their fathers and the oppressions of their nations which come because of selfishness and the desires for the substance of wealth then all these things of necessity will become a part of the fabric of their souls and all mankind will become inherently of an evil nature and they will not be able to overcome their sins and corruptions by their repentance because repentance could only redeem them to restore them back to be what they were created to be in that place so you guys have to understand that we can only be restored to what we were created to be in the first place and if we had been created on the earth then we could only be restored to this very limited form of existence let's continue at verse 30 and all your children, O Father, would find themselves in a position that it would be impossible to be brought back into your presence, for they would have been created with evil as a part of their beings, and nothing evil may enter into your presence. Thus repentance will be for nothing, and the great calamity of their sorrow would never end, but be before you to behold forever." And it would be thus, even for all those of your children who sought after you to love you with all the earnestness of their hearts. And thus it could be said that your loved ones were conceived in sin with nothing that could be done for them by their works of repentance. And in this way, the great holiness of your love would be brought to naught 
as they would be evil in their natures, and they would be in their natural state of sin, and could not be known as your children in spite of the love they have for you. So, now that y'all have read this, now that you understand this, now you can understand a little bit better why the Nephilim don't have a place they don't have any redemption because the Nephilim are created upon the earth. Think about that for a second. Now, we're going to continue at verse 32. And it would come to pass that surely, even if they could be with you, they would not be happy in their guilt and forebodings to be in the light of your presence. For their souls would have as part of the fabric of their beings all of the evils of those who have gone before them and it could be said that one man must answer for the sins of another and in this way most holy father and after this manner your loving desires for them and their visions of created purpose would come to naught and upon hearing all of these things God said Oh, woe is me, for surely all that you have said is true. What is it that we shall do? Where then shall we create all the children of men? And it came to pass that a watcher who was named Tahamiel said unto God, O oh God, most holy, perhaps you could create them in the natural world of Eden, where there is no sin. Yet sin is possible so that your children could feel comfortable and respected in whatever they choose, in either being holy and clean or corrupted and unclean. And if they choose to sin, thereby they would not suffer from the pains of guilt. And if they are alienated in any way, they may not suffer from the distress of affliction and in this way they would not be brought to feel despair at their sin but they could know of a surety that it is acceptable before you to have sin for in Eden there is no sin but sin is possible okay so here we had another watcher making a case and this watcher came making a case for man to be created in Eden but understand understand that this is another slick mouth watcher and this is another one that would fall he would be a fallen watcher and if you guys remember this one was Tahamiel the intelligence of God marble that's the fallen watcher that he would become in the future but at this time he had not fallen yet so he was making a claim, but listen to his claim. His claim was that we would be made in Eden, where it's possible to have sin. You see that. You see, and then it says that sin would be acceptable before you. Talking about not feeling guilt. Can y'all believe this guy? Let's pick up on verse 36. And when this watcher was finished speaking, Messiah said unto his father, Father, if you create all the children of men in a place where sin is possible, as this watcher has said, then you of necessity must build into the fabric of the souls of your children an anticipation and an expectation of the acceptability of sin and corruption insomuch that sin and corruption would be as desirable and natural and acceptable for them as holiness and righteousness and it would come to pass that at the last day when all stand before you to be judged they could not be rightly held to account for their sins or their errors in abandoning you or their misdeeds and they would therefore be unjustly banished out of your presence and their cries for justice would ascend up before you forever and I know that this is not the desire of your heart for them wow do y'all see that 
Do you see how it says that you would have to build into the fabric of the souls of your children an anticipation and an expectation of the acceptability of sin and corruption? This is the line vision that people have on the earth right now thinking that hey it's perfectly okay for me to do whatever the hell I want to do do as thou wilt bust hell wide open be all butt naked let it hang out be with as many partners as I want to have all kind of sexual depravity yada 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 so forth so forth so on understand that this would have been a a reality and a true reality had we been created in Eden. Do you understand that? All right. Let's pick it back up. We're going to pick it up at verse 37. And it came to pass that the Holy Great One was very moved upon by these sayings of his son. And it seemed to all those who looked upon this scene that it was hopeless to know where to create the children of men. And God said, My beloved son, in light of the truth of all that you have said, what is it that we shall do to determine where to create the souls of men, so that in the end I can live with all my children who have chosen to love me? You see that? The Most High wants to live with his children who have chosen to love him who had free will and said you know what I choose to love my father let's continue verse 38 and it came to pass that upon hearing these words of his father Messiah stepped forward and he bowed himself down before him and he said please O holy father let us create them even each and every soul of all the host of men here in the utter goodness and purity and holiness of the light of your presence so that in the day of their creation not one particle of any portion of their beings will be evil or unclean or corrupted or polluted in any manner whatsoever and let us do this so that in the end all men may know of a surety that the true land of the nativity of their souls is in the very midst of the bottom of your loving heart and that is the only place where they belong and in this way all men in any family of men during all the course of the earth will be born as little babies in their utter innocence and purity and holiness of heart and in the end, they will know that they had to go against their created nature to sin. And in this way, and because of this, in the end, each and every human soul will be able to assert to the justice of your judgment upon them all, either for good or ill. Do y'all see that? In order to sin... We have to go against our created purpose. And because of that, every last one of us has to acknowledge the fact that the judgment, the justice of the judgment that will be upon us, whether for good or evil, is true. And it is justice. Do y'all understand that? Do you understand why we have free will? Picking up on verse 39. O oh, Holy Father, let us make them so that each and every human soul will start out their lives and first find breath, being equal to their Father in heaven in the infinite goodness and purity and holiness of their hearts and lives. Please create them, O oh Father, here with you in the spiritual world of Elda. 
And it came to pass that the Lord God heard all these words of his son, and he thought upon them for a while. And then he said to Messiah, What will happen to them when they sin, and they are obliged to depart out of my presence? Where will they go? And will I not yet become destitute of my children? And what will be the definition of their form? For here in Elder, there is no need for element to find form. What is to become of my children if we create them here in Elda? Verse 41. And upon hearing these questions from the mouth of his father, Messiah stirred himself, and he said, O most holy father, the answer to all of your questions lies in your great decrees of creation. I am a man of flesh who is willing to please and bless you by redeeming back to you as many of them as are willing to love you. For I will only and always and ever love you, and I will walk in perfection of way by the law that springs forth out of Jeshurun because of my unending and diligent love for you, and I will not submit to the desires of my own heart or my own will, but I shall declare to you before the face of all the watchers of the presence that I will want only for your will to be done, and all of the glory will be yours forever. And it shall be that by these means I am ever able to heal and cleanse and forgive your children. And I will be obedient to all the desires of your heart, no matter the cost to me. And in my love for you, I will always submit to your word to me and to that which you desire of me, even unto going below all things in the agony of my suffering, so that I may rescue any of your children who may choose to love you, who find themselves there. And because of my sufferings, I will be able to forgive and restore and cleanse and heal all those I find there who are willing to love you and repent of their sins. And it came to pass that all those in heaven who heard these sayings of Messiah knew for a surety that they were true, for they all could behold for themselves the nail prints in his hands and feet, and they all bore record of his willingness to go below all things, and in this way, be fully obedient unto his father. All right, family. So here, the Messiah himself is saying, Look, I will always rod for your children, and I will always love you, and I will be the one to heal them and to forgive them in spite of their sins. And it says that when he said it, that everybody there knew that it was true because they could see the nail prints in his hands. Don't let that confuse y'all. Understand that the Most High exists outside of time. So, Trying to wrap your head around the construct of time and what has happened and what will happen. Don't y'all know that there's nothing new under the sun? Don't y'all know that the works of the Lord are one eternal round? Understand that that is why they could see those nails in his hands. Even then, do you understand? If you don't understand, drop a comment. We can talk about it some more. Now we're going to pick up on verse 42. And it came to pass that in those, Salakia, that all those in heaven who heard these sayings, oh wait, I already read that one. Pick up on verse 43. And Messiah went on to say, This, O Holy Father, is how this may be accomplished. When I die, 
being full of the life that comes from the obedience of walking in perfection of way, I will rise again unto life. And in this way, I will overcome death and the separation of the spirits of men from their bodies. And I will reunite all the souls of men to their bodies to bring them to stand before you to be judged for their works of righteousness and repentance, whether they have done them or not, and for all that they have chosen in their choosing. And this is the manner in which element can find form in Elda. First, I will give you a reason to create each and every soul of men, and that reason will be their vision of created purpose. And in this way, I shall give each soul to you as a perfect gift to lighten your heart and to comfort you in the way and be your companion. Therefore, let us give the element that is here in elder form in such a way that the vision of created purpose of each and every one who you create will be the very specific definition of all creation and for all the form that element will take in their behalf. And in this way, you shall create the being of all existence entirely for the soul of each one. And in this way, their vision of created purpose will become the definition of all the forms element will take and the soul of each one you create will be thus built into the fabric of all the element and find forms in their behalf here in Elda. Wow! So now you all understand why creation views each and every soul as the only soul that ever existed. Like the whole earth is made solely for each and every one of us. Wow. Verse 46. And this is not all. For it shall come to pass. That all of the love and joys. And happiness. That you feel. In your delightful anticipation. Of receiving them as gifts to your bosom. Will also become the very specific definition of all the form that element here in Elda takes in your behalf. And thus, these two definitions shall dwell together in element and be joined into the fabric of all creation side by side. And joined, and for this reason and in this manner, you will be able to abide with your children in the element of their world for in this way I shall bring Elda unto them to abide also with them and it will come to pass that you O Holy Father will always and ever be around them during their walk in the flesh and you will be beside them and in them and you will become subjected to all the delights of their passages Wow. So now you understand when you ask yourself the question, what does the Most High feel right now? You understand that He is right there in creation with you. Do y'all see that? Do you understand that you can look and listen and feel the nature around you to confirm if you are in the will of the Father? Verse 49 And it came to pass that upon hearing this, God clapped his hands for joy. And he sang a song of glory that is ever sung in heaven as a birthing song. Then one of the watchers of the presence, who is the foremost among the Urkadeshi, said to God, O Father, it is indeed true 
that all that your son has said unto you will come to pass. For surely in this way you can dwell in rich happiness with all of your children when they are created. But when they sin, will not they also of a necessity be obliged to be sent forth from out of the being in the midst of the element that holds the presence of your holiness? How shall we provide the means whereby when they sin, they shall not be cast out of the element whose form is defined by their vision of created purpose, together with the definition, your great joy to have them? Salakia, together with the definition of your great joy to have them. So this watcher is asking the question, well, if the father is going to be there in element, if the father is going to be there in creation, and we know that sin cannot exist where the father is, then, then what are we going to do when they sin? How are we going to cast them out of element? Let's pick up at verse 51. And it came to pass that all heaven fell silent at this hard question. And it was heard to be said in heaven that this was a question that was too hard to be answered. And all of the watchers of the presence were amazed at that which was before their eyes. And they wondered and spoke to one another. And it came to pass that a cry of delight was heard and all the concourse of heaven watched intently to see what would happen. And out from in the Salakia and out from in their midst, the hero of all men arose and he stepped forward and it was Messiah. It was Yeshia. It was Matzah. It was the son. Verse 53, and he approached toward the north and he prophesied before his father and he said, O most holy father, there will be those from among your children who choose to love you during all the course of the earth who will enter into a covenant with element in which they shall seven themselves and the nature of this covenant shall be such that there will be one who enters into a binding agreement in love to see to it that my vision and purpose will be built into the fabric of all creation and my soul also both as a man and as your son will be built into the fabric of all the forms that element takes and I together with you and your children will be the third very specific definition that all element takes so that when they sin I am there also with you and them to forgive them and to restore them and to make them whole and to ever mediate between you and them and because of these three definitions abiding together in all the forms that element takes it will come to pass that they may sin and yet you may still dwell with your children by my hand ladies and gentlemen the father stays with us because the son is here for us when we fall short so even the wicked understand that when the when the wicked are out be wicked understand that Christ is even standing before the father then pleading for them to give them another chance because the father is here verse 54 and in this way you shall not become desolate of your children for you have not decreed that you can be a father to man by the intervention of the agency of your son who is a man and have you not decreed that all of the doings of creation and all of the affairs of the salvation of men must be done by man by the intervention of their agencies of their free will therefore after one shall 
covenant with all the elements of the earth that I shall be built into the fabric of all creation. There will be many who shall declare it and renew it year by year ever after. That's talking about Shabuah. Verse 55. And it came to pass that all heaven erupted into singing and into praises for the loveliness of the Son of God and the hope of this prophecy. And in their singing, they proclaimed that forevermore the way back to the Father dwells with men and the Father is comforted and ever feels the sweetness of the offering of his son and his righteous children and he is comforted with everlasting comfort that shall last for all eternity because of messiah and because of him all men who choose can thus be saved to dwell with their father do you guys see the thought the care the consideration and the love that the Father had for us even before our souls were created. We were already being looked out for. Now, go with me back into the stick of Joseph. We're going to go to Alma chapter 42. And we're going to read verse 31. That's the book of Alma, chapter 42. And we're going to read verse 31. And now, O my son, ye are called of God to preach the word unto this people. And now, my son, go thy way. Declare the word with truth and soberness, that thou mayest bring souls unto repentance, that the great plan of mercy may have claim upon them, and may God grant unto you, even according to my words. Amen. That is the justice of the judgment. Because... No man is going to be able to say, uh, it wasn't fair, it, it, it wasn't for me. Understand that we all have the agency to choose. We all can access this power. I hope that every last one of you who have listened to this entire message found it very edifying. I hope the edification went forward. I know that this was kind of a heavy lesson. It was a big piece of steak. So y'all go ahead and put down your steak knife. Have a sip of some of that good cool water. And just praise the Most High. Praise Him that he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son the water were wat kadash for guiding us for leading us for teaching us all praises to ahia kased bahashim yeshaya much love much respect and much shalom. Shalom.